Now we move on to Le Chatelier's principle, which is one of the most important fundamental principles in all of chemistry. What it dictates is it describes how a system in equilibrium responds to stress. And what that stress is, is something that pushes the equilibrium balance away from equilibrium. And so a lot of times that means that you add more of a reactant or add more of a product, you might remove a reactant or something that causes it to no longer be in equilibrium. There are three different components of Le Chatelier's principle. The first of which is very famous and it's known as the law of mass action. And what that says is that in any system, Q will move toward K. And remember that Q describes the concentrations raised to their coefficients. And these concentrations are in the current state of the reaction. So it's not yet in equilibrium, but Q can give you a sense of where it is relative to equilibrium. Whereas K here is the equilibrium constant that everything moves toward, but these values are the values at equilibrium. Now remember that if we put K and Q alphabetically, then we can use a greater than or less than symbol in order to figure out how the law of mass action will work. And so if K is greater than Q, then that is essentially an arrowhead saying the reaction moves right. And that kind of makes sense because if Q is small, that means you don't have many products or you have a lot of reactants more than you would at equilibrium. And because of that, because of this deficiency of products, the reaction will try to reach equilibrium by moving to the right. It will try to produce more products and use up more of these reactants so that it again reaches this equilibrium constant of K. So Le Chatelier's principle is very important when you look at the law of mass action. And you can think of it sort of intuitively. If this system was in equilibrium and then we decided to remove some of the product, what that would do is it would create a deficiency of the product now that would encourage the reaction to continue moving forward. And you see this used a lot in chemical procedures because if you keep removing product, then Le Chatelier's principle says the reaction is going to continue to move to the right. So it will continue to produce more and more product. And a lot of times that product is your goal. And so you can create more of this product by removing it from the equation and mass action says, well, we must create more product as a result of that. The second component of Le Chatelier's principle is how it deals with heat. Notice that heat doesn't show up in these equilibrium equations here, but it does have an impact on the movement of a reaction. If you have an exothermic reaction, that is one that releases heat. And so you could just add plus Q here and treat heat as a product. And what that means is that if you were to move this reaction to a cooler environment where there isn't as much heat, then it would continue to move forward so it would produce more heat. Remember that if it's exothermic, this releases heat. And so moving the other way requires it to absorb heat. And it doesn't make sense if there isn't much heat around that this reaction would want to go in that direction. And so by moving this reaction to a cooler environment, in effect what you're doing is removing one of the products. And if you remove a product from an equilibrium system, then it will continue to produce more of those products. And similarly, if it's an endothermic reaction, then you treat heat as a reactant over here. And so if you move to a cooler environment or a environment with more heat energy, with a higher temperature, for example, then you will see similar responses. It will be either increasing the amount of a reactant or of a product. And that has an effect on Le Chatelier's principle and where the equilibrium system will move. The third piece of Le Chatelier's is pressure. Remember that if you increase pressure, that imposes a lot of stress on gases because gases are very, very responsive to pressure. And an increase in pressure has the effect of moving the reaction toward the side with fewer moles of gas. So whichever side of this equation had fewer moles of gas in the balanced equation, if you increase the pressure, that reaction will move toward the side with fewer moles of gas. And similarly, if you removed pressure, or for example, you 
had the same reaction going on, but you increased the area, the volume in which it was happening, that would be something that would lower the pressure overall. And lower pressure favors the side of the reaction with more moles of gas. And so by reducing pressure, that will cause the reaction to move toward the side that has more moles of gas in the balanced equation. And so notice that usually when you're thinking about Le Chatelier's, you have the law of mass action, and that's purely based on how Q and K interact with each other. But there are two other things that can cause a system to respond that aren't reflected in the K and Q mass action formulas. And those are a change in temperature or an addition of heat energy and a change in pressure. Those are the two things that can modify K and they can move the equilibrium point away from this constant to a slightly different value because heat and pressure both play a role in the movement of a reaction because heat is either going to be a product or reactant and pressure is going to favor one side or the other. If pressure gets higher, that favors the side with fewer moles of gas. Now there is one exception, and that is that if you see an increase in pressure that's caused by a non-reactive gas, so that means that you perhaps add a gas to the system, but that gas is not part of this balanced formula, then that will not have an effect. Because what you really are looking at is what are the partial pressures of the gases that actually participate in this reversible reaction equation. That's the one exception. If you have an increase in pressure, but the gas that's causing that increase of pressure is not part of the balanced equation, that will have no effect. Otherwise, increased pressure favors the side with fewer moles of gas. And uh, if it's an exothermic reaction, if you were to increase the amount of heat, that would be essentially increasing the amount of product and thus it would push the reaction toward the left in order to resolve that stress. So there are three parts of Le Chatelier's. You have the law of mass action, which is Q moving toward K. And remember that if you draw a greater than symbol, that works like an arrow to the right. And if you draw a less than symbol, that will work like an arrow to the left. So it tells you which way the reaction goes. You also have to consider heat as either a product or a reactant. And you have to consider pressure. Those are the three things that influence the movement of a system that was previously in equilibrium but now has some stress imposed upon it. That's all part of Le Chatelier's principle.